Welcome back to the Detect Crime series webinar presented by Serialize. In each episode, we examine one specific aspect of how crime series work, with a little help from the excellent scholars of the Detect project, practitioners in the field, and our own Serialize instructors. Last week, we talked about the criminal protagonist, who's really a character at war with himself. Over the next two episodes, we'll dig a little deeper into the detective character. The detective is the opposite of the criminal in almost every conceivable way. Of course, the detective is the good girl or the good guy, the morally upstanding defender of law and order. But what does good guy or good girl actually mean? How good is the modern detective, really? In the crime fiction genre, two character archetypes have emerged for the detective over the last century and a half. Detect scholar Kim Tov Townsend explains these two archetypes. Well, historically, crime narratives have always varied between the genius outsider detective and the affected insider detective. The traditional model here is, of course, the British amateur detective, that is, Ms. Marple or Hercule Poirot, as the outsider untouched by the crime. On the other hand, we have the American private detective, Philip Marlowe and Sam Spade as insiders touched by the crime. Um, in semiotic terms, this variation has been called the centered detective versus the decentered detective. That is, one detective with a trust in truth uh, and another detective with no long with no trust in, 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 in truth as such. The center detective believes in the existence of a noble truth that can be attained through the application of sheer intelligence and logic. Whereas the decentered, slightly jaded detective is not much of a thinker, but uses his fists and gumption to catch the bad guy. Serialized instructor Nicolas Lozoadi has called these archetypes the Witcher and the Warrior, respectively. We discuss these character types in episode two of the webinar. According to Nicola, the modern iteration of The Witcher shows up in series like CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, Lie to Me, or Criminal Minds. Here the noble truth is made apparent with the use of te computer technology or the application of a specific scientific method. In contrast, The Warrior, the hardball detective type, shows up in series like NYPD Blue, The Wire, or True Detective. He's the macho guy who goes into the jungle and chases down the criminals. Kim Toft Hansen notes that in many European markets program a lot of police procedurals. In these shows, the police usually solve the crime at the end of the episode. This demonstrates a desire on the part of both the producers and the audiences to view the police as an effective institution. However, there has been a shift at the center of the narrative. Whereas, as a society, we want to believe that the police maintain law and order, there are moments of doubts about that system. However, the, the main police officer also maintains uh, the tainted and morale characteristics, characteristics of uh, the hard boy private detective, the, 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 the American model, if you will. This means that we have seen crime narrative that puts a lot of trust in the police system on the one hand, but at the same time, this trust comes up with a price. Um, the detective suffers and becomes sort of a, an emblematic symbol of all the wrongs in society. In, 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 in my mind, a very good example of this mixture is the character Harry Holly, uh, that is the prot protagonist in UNESCO's crime notes. Uh, Harry Holy is practically a, a, a private detective in the disguise of a policeman. In, in, in his novels, he solves the cases by putting himself in his personal morals uh, and, and really the authority of the police at, uh, and at jeopardy. Um, and this specific type of suffering and the lonely Scandinavian police officer, which we have seen in, in many guises throughout uh, the history of Nordic Noir, uh, may really be the prime uh, influential case from the Nordic region and, and into the international uh, 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 marketplace for crime fiction, if you will. The archetype of the centered police detective with an infallible trust in the truth and the system 
doesn't really exist in its purest form anymore. So what does the contemporary detective look like now? Let's take a look at how this shift occurred in Danish TV. At the turn of the millennium, Danish TV producer Sven Clausen was commissioned by the public broadcaster DR to produce a new high-end crime series, Unit 1. After shadowing the creators of NYPD Blue in Hollywood for a while, he was keen to apply this knowledge to his own production. And, um, and my little sort of setup story is that when I was allowed to do the first modern, huge Danish crime series, um, Unit One, um, I thought I had learned everything. Uh, and uh, sort of the way we shot, uh, the way we invested in the technical devices for the show, and the more we copied NYPD Blue, <laughs> uh, we sat nevertheless at the editing room after doing the two opening episodes, sort of a, a double story, and we were bored. Um, and I had the worst Christmas I've ever had uh, pondering uh, what on earth are we going to do? And I assembled a group of two directors and uh, the two head writers for other shows. And we went out on Boxing Day to the editing room and watched these two opening episodes of the new show. And we discussed and we pondered. And late night, um, I got a call from one of the head writers of another show telling me that we had done something essentially wrong. We had created a crime show uh, in which um, um, a, 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 a crime or a murder was investigated by some policemen. We ought to have made a series of policemen solving a crime. Sven realized that the private lines, the storylines about the policemen's personal and emotional lives were just as, if not more, interesting to the viewers than the plot lines about the crime cases. As Kim Toft Hansen suggests, the trope of the lonely, suffering Scandinavian police officer staring out into the middle distance has become one of the most successful exports of the Nordic region. The brilliant mind of the analytical detective has become infused with a sense of, shall we say, ennui? Detect scholar Federico Pagella notes that the best example of this new, hybridized archetype is Sherlock Holmes from the BBC series Sherlock. But the, la the, the newest uh, Sherlock series clearly uh, shows us uh, a kind of a different Sherlock Holmes, which definitely in in incorporates traits of um, different kind of heroes that comes from other genres uh, and definitely the kind of complex television anti-heroes the gender the male character with some problems that we were discussing also in the previous episode uh, have been included in the figure of Sherlock Holmes in the series Sherlock. Fellow detect scholar Caius de Brescu speaks of a norization of Sherlock. Sherlock Holmes not only faces murky and morally distorted antagonists, but he also has to face his own demons and inner cracks of his character. Caius says that this reimagining of the Sherlock character is expressive of the first of two tendencies that modern writers have followed in shaping the detective character in recent years. So on the one hand, you have the, the detective that becomes more and more, uh, uh, well, eccentric, uh, scarred, so to say. Yeah, he bears the, the stigma, uh, 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 either that he has uh, some personal, he went through some personal uh, tragedies. Yeah, so this is uh, quite usual. He lost uh, someone uh, very dear to, to him uh, or her, of course. So uh, uh, they made this, uh, th this experience of, of, of suffering, let's say, of trauma, uh, or in some cases, you witnessed uh, uh, you know, social tragedies or, well, he, he was connected to or, or implied in, in uh, involved in, in uh, events that take place in, well, I don't know, war zones or, or things like this. Um, or uh, he carries uh, uh, um, uh, um, a, a um, 
the weight of some uh, psychological illness, yeah, um, uh, or, or or even his work, the fact that he he uh, has to do on a daily basis with a basis uh, uh, manifestation of, of of human nature uh, somehow impacts and impregnates him or her. So the first tendency is to exoticize the character by giving him or her a physical or psychological scar that makes him stand out in a largely normal world. This is taking the hardball detective archetype almost to an extreme. Examples of this archetype are Sherlock, but also Professor T, the brilliant but arrogant and abrasive criminal psychologist in the Belgian series of the same name and its many local remakes. Professor T's obsessive compulsiveness is based on several neuroses that he has developed over his lifetime. Over the course of the series, he must uncover the emotional trauma that he has carried with him over the unsolved death of his father. The second tendency in designing the detective character goes in the opposite direction. Um, and on the other hand, on the other hand, you have uh, the other way around. You have a tendency of normalizing the detective, of presenting him or, or her in, in her social uh, milieu, social context, family context, uh, uh, absolutely. So they, they just create this sense of, of, of uh, uh, normalcy, um, of humaneness, if you want. I mean, they are uh, human and nothing that is human is, uh, 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 is uh, strange to them, uh, is alien to them. Uh, and this uh, uh, normalcy is somehow contrasted to uh, a world went crazy. Yeah. Um, and here, I mean, of course, we, in, in, especially in the Scandinavian world, you have quite a lot of examples of, of detective, of female detectives that are also, you know, mothers and wives and confront the uh, crisis of, the, uh, of their teenage uh, uh, children and uh, the, um, the marriage problems and they deal with, you know, the, the daily uh, um, harassments of, uh, of social life and domestic life and uh, while at the same time chasing for serial killers. A prime example of this archetype is DCI John Barnaby in Midsummer Murders, who has to procure dog food and diapers while dealing with the increasingly bizarre murders that are regularly staged in his county. Or the chief of police Andre Olafsson in Iceland's Trapped series, who must deal with a divorce from his wife while hunting down a ruthless killer in the middle of a blizzard. This character type has to stay level and keep a lid on things while the world around them is in disorder. So we have these two types of detective characters. On the one hand, the exotic, deeply traumatized, but brilliant sociopath. And on the other hand, the also average family person with very humane and empathetic character traits. Now what happens when you put both characters in the same show? According to Federico Pagello, these two detective types, the exotic, traumatized type, and the regular family person type, may also appear in the same show. If I think about the bridge, for instance, you have a couple of detectives, one of which is precisely the everyday um, father figure, and the other one is kind of a high social, high functioning social path. So the point is, these two models are often or can be hybridized, combined together, and this dialectics between the different poles, the two apparently opposite poles of uh, the subjectivity of the detective uh, can be brought together in order to give to the, the audience both. Sagana Rain is the exotic detective. She's a driven by the book police detective from Malmö with Asperger syndrome, whereas Martin Roder, the police detective from Copenhagen, is a laid-back, caring family man who doesn't mind bending the rules every now and then. In his family life, Martin has to deal with his estranged son, August, who has moved back in with Martin and his second wife, Mette, and their three young children. In contrast, Saga lives alone and prefers to pick up men in bars for casual sex. Her poor social skills and her difficulty in empathizing make her appear cold, insensitive, and blunt. During the first encounter, Saga endangers the life of a sick man when she refuses to let the ambulance carrying him leave the crime scene. Eventually, Martin 
has the road cleared so that the ambulance can drive off. But Saga reports Martin to Internal Affairs for failing to follow proper regulation in securing a crime scene. But it is precisely their polar opposites, the brilliant obsessive compulsive workhorse and the gregarious and empathetic family man that make them work well together. This dialectical dynamic is a familiar one in the buddy cop genre. We see it in another famous pairing, The X-Files. One the skeptic and the other the believer in supernatural and alien occurrences. What's new is the degree to which the personality traits of the two detectives have been enhanced or even exaggerated. Federico points out that there is also a gender aspect to the specific pairing in The Bridge. In The Bridge you have the female high-functioning sociopath detective and the male uh, everyday uh, father, man of the family kind of uh, detective uh, combined together. Saga is the hyper-rational person and lacks the soft, feminine social skills that are required to excel in the modern workplace. She has to rely on Martin for advice on how to behave in a more diplomatic fashion towards other people. Finally, it's worth remembering that both characters are heightened, slightly ironic stereotypes of how Danes and Swedes see each other. Swedes like to say that Danes are more concerned with living well and spending a lot of time with their families, whereas Danes view Swedes as arrogant and overly ambitious in their professional lives. We can see how that plays out in Saga and Martin's characters. While the specific character traits of the detective make the respective series unique and interesting to viewers, they are not, at least in most cases, what drives the storytelling. The need to solve the case and catch the killer still remains the primary story engine in most detective dramas. In contrast, the criminal protagonist's internal contradictions and the choices that come out of those contradictions create the conflicts in those series. If you take Walter White out of Breaking Bad, there is no conflict. However, if you take Martin Rode out of The Bridge, there will still be a murder case to solve. In this episode, we have looked at different archetypes of the detective character. Screenwriters should not take these archetypes as prescriptive. Rather, the fact that they evolve and change over time should be an invitation to keep thinking about how you can push along this evolution and what kind of characters you want to see represented on screen. In addition to this webinar, we're also organizing a contest for new original series ideas for either broadcast or streaming services. The proposed show should challenge and push the genre in un unexpected ways and use crime narratives to explore the richness and complexity of European societies. An international jury of top professionals from the broadcast and streaming industries will review the top five submissions. The winning author or team of authors will be invited to attend the DETECT final conference in Rome in June 2021 and meet the members of the jury. You can go to the link in the show notes of this episode to find out more about this contest.